the culture is so important because of the history of this third ward area and how many families moved into this neighborhood years back and the uh, history of this community. Most families, you know, they moved from the north and they moved this way toward the third ward community. Uh, it was um, built on, you know, the black church was so important back then. You had all the churches that has so much history. And then you had these high schools. You had Yakes, you had Ryan School, which is now DeBakey. And then you had families back then who had nowhere else to live but in this inner third war community. And they, when they moved in, and then not including, you had the history of the Emancipation Park. Mm -hmm. uh, Emancipation Park was where the slaves landed, you know, years back. And families moved into this community. And in particular, in this area, you had Riverside Hospital. Mm -hmm. This was one of the only hospitals that a black family, a black person, could be born in. Just so happened I was born in Riverside Hospital. And, and um, Riverside Hospital had professional people, had doctors, it had Texas Southern University, which was a huge anchor uh, to this community. And not including, you had working families who worked downtown, they worked all over the city, and this was an anchor. This was public, trans some public transportation was here. And even back then, you had the wine gardens, you know, during then you had the wine gardens grocery store, well, people, people, African Americans couldn't even sit back then. They, you know, when they went into wine gardens, they had a protest, and the protest was about the fact that African Americans could not sit in this in the cafeteria, in the wine garden, the grocery store. So all that brought about uh, a community that had went through a lot of abuse, uh, and uh, a lot of uh, working families lived in this community, and. Um, and it, it has been an anchor. It's, it's been a place where people were able to buy a home. They may could not buy a home totally, but that's where they could be able to rent and it was close and convenient. So many of the buildings in Third Ward, people would say are an eyesore. Some of them are older buildings and abandoned buildings. Speak about this art and what do buildings like this do? I mean, it's just riveting, it's popping with beautiful colors. Speak about the value that it's bringing to the community. Well, certainly the culture that it brings uh, and, and Houston, in particular Third Ward, has so much talent and you have people who have the talent. And so it certainly makes the collective of this neighborhood, this what makes Third Ward different than other areas because the talent, the young people that you have has the skill set of art. And it's different because it's not like when you go into suburban Houston or you go into other neighborhoods. It's collective. It's it's a it's a mixture of of new with the old. And a building like this, um, uh, we we had really hoped that there could be funding that will help uh, a developer of some kind to go in and encourage them to redevelop uh, a building like this. Because what makes a neighborhood and what have made, what will make Third Ward, a better neighborhood now, is the idea of fact that you could get retail. Mm -hmm. And a building like this could have been renovated to be some type of retail. I believe with all the new construction that's coming on, there would be a need for more. Uh, just so happened across from here, the Riverside Hospital, when that facility is renovated, it's going to bring about jobs that will be coming from the county. And when, when there's jobs that it is brought in the neighborhood, it also will bring a need for retail space. So being in Third Ward, we're at this building. Half of it was damaged, but the George Floyd mural still stands. So speak to us about how people are honoring their loved ones' legacies and how they're exuding it on these beautiful murals to remember their loved ones. Well, this is a sign of expression. And the culture in Houston is so different because of the talent that we have. Uh, the culture of this third ward area is is, um, is 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 what makes third ward different for Houston. Uh, what what is so loved about this is that this was something that was drawn from somebody right out of the community, and the love what what George Floyd went through. This was the neighborhood that he lived in. This is where he went to school, and so. I would think that, um, th that the climate in this community would be to preserve the culture and to preserve this, this wonderful mural that was, that was designed by someone right out of this neighborhood who designed it for, for, for the area. And this would be a more reason why we would want to 
preserve it. We would want to uh, see what are the uh, specifications for some developer to, to get it, or even a community organization. You know, it is so sentimental because it was right behind the Judson Robinson's office, who was a city councilman, first black city councilman in this community. Uh, it is, again, across from Riverside Hospital. Uh, it, it backdrop both University of Houston and Texas Southern University. So many people go down Elgin to get back and forth from 288 to 59. And um, I would think that people in this community, this is the reason that now even today with this interview, there are people driving by waving and smiling. They drive by and take pictures of this mural. This is a landmark. And, and uh, what is so significant is that um, uh, the historical value for this particular building, and this is the reason that I have been, as a real estate person in this community, have been against tearing the preservation of old buildings that we can preserve. So this is a good, uh, this was a place where people came. This was their grocery store. Uh, when they had no other store to go to, this was a beauty salon place where people came and got their nails done and got their hair done. So it carries a lot of history. Uh, and, then, uh, and then it was a washeteria. So it's been a multitude of different particular uses for this particular space. I am so uh, happy that our fire department was able to preserve the rest of the building. They were able to get right out, as I looked at the news this morning, to, to um, preserve the building and preserve that it didn't totally burn. But I, I, but I, I believe what we need in Houston is that we want to make sure that we look out for when we see people that are setting fires and that we call the proper authorities to preserve it as well as I certainly want to see our city leaders take a more leadership role in giving opportunities where either nonprofits or either business people can have opportunities to, to have example funding to preserve a building like this. But also we've got to um, have funding for people like this so that they can yeah. be able to get the necessary financing. We've got to have some incentives to say that we want to preserve it. It's more to it than just tearing a building down in a community and building a three-story townhome where you have no history of the, of the neighborhood. Yeah. Certainly this could be a culture center. Yeah. You know, it could be a, a, a culture center. Um, and um, the appraisal district, mm -hmm. you know, looks at places like this and what they do is give no value in the building. They give all the value in the land. Yeah. And that's why it ends up being that it's torn down because the land cost goes up so high mm -hmm. till it's the best thing to do is to tear it down. Yeah, Nancy Kinder uh, mm -hmm. did the YWCA. Yes. And what they did is they preserved that building. Mm -hmm. And now it's a community building and it, they just got the historical marker dedicated within about the last several days.